So as the left comes to grips with the fact that there would be limits on a, what a Biden administration could do to implement that radical makeover of the United States, is one group that continues to nurture the idea of hijacking the Federal Reserve. The new consensus has ties to Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and it's putting forth its manifesto that Biden can actually tap into the Fed for trillions of dollars, citing the role the Fed played in saving big banks during the Great Recession. Now, prior to that crisis, the Fed's balance sheet was less than $900 billion. By December of 2008, it was $2.2 trillion. By November of 2014, $4.5 trillion. Today, it's more than $7 trillion and counting. Walzer Wealth Management, Rebecca Walzer joins me now. So, Rebecca, you know, it's not far-fetched that the Federal Reserve could shift its mission to things like paying for the Green New Deal, considering that it's already shifted its focus to sort of being a social justice warrior. I know they have a dual mandate, but it feels like they're already doing more, and it worries me. Your thoughts? This is exactly what happens, Charles, when people try to work outside of the actual process of constitutional republic and, you know, representative government. In other words, we have a House and a Senate and a president. And when you have a, maybe a Republican Senate, for example, and a House that's Democratic, you can't get the Green New Deal through. And we designed it that way intentionally. The founding fathers, it was designed that way to prevent, you know, crazy, um, I'm not saying the Green New Deal is crazy, but let's just say it costs, you know, $10 trillion. And it cannot get passed through the Senate. That's why it was designed that way, so that we don't have these things that get through without, you know, really being acceptable to the American people. Right. But then, then you have people who are saying, OK, we watched the, the big banks uh, do all kinds of crazy things. And when they got busted, uh, the Federal Reserve came to the rescue. The, the federal government came to the rescue. No one was asked. No one was given a vote. And, and by the way, if any money was made, it wasn't shared with the average American. <laughs> How do you convince them that we should not hijack the Federal Reserve to print endless amounts of money for the Green New Deal to pay off student debts? Like, ultimately, we're already on a path to, to sort of devaluing the, the real worth of the dollar. But it's, the, the, it's a lunacy idea that I don't think enough people is paying attention to. You know, Charles, the Troubled Asset Relief Program during the Great Recession was very targeted because it was at our banks. The Federal Reserve does have a role in the solvency of our money supply system, which go through commercial banks. So there was a there was a symbiotic relationship there that made sense. The Green New Deal and social justice is not the purview of the Federal Reserve. And you have to ask yourself, if you can't get it through Congress and you don't have China and India, which are the two world's largest populations and pr producing the most CO2 and the most actual toxic, you know, byproduct, if they're not willing to change anything, join right. any Paris Accord, do anything, why is America going to, through the Federal Reserve, implement a system that will cost trillions of dollars with little to zero impact when China and India are still doing these things? The economics of it is right. honestly ridiculous. I, I agree. I agree. I want to switch gears here a little bit because progressives also pushing Biden to eliminate student debt. Uh, and it's interesting because the left leaning Brookings Institute actually says that would be a huge mistake, in part because 56 percent of that debt is held by grads with professional degrees or masters. Thirty five percent are in the top 20 earners. So, Rebecca, I mean, we know there's going to be a Donnie Brook in the Democratic Party about this, but the notion of a cab driver who didn't go to college, taking his tax money to pay off the student loans of someone with a master's degree is nuts. Yeah, Charles, this is not even addressing the problem. This is like putting a Band-Aid over a symptom. The real problem is the value of the education. If you're going to graduate with a degree that you have a student loan for, that you're not going to procure a job that pays enough to pay that student loan, then the problem is the degree. It's not giving you something that's of value in the economic cycle, in the market, to go out and actually make enough to pay the loan. So why don't we address the actual educational value instead of just putting a Band-Aid on it and saying, well, we're just going to pay the loan to the education. Doesn't matter the education's not good enough, and let's just have all taxpayers share in this. And what about the people that pay their student loans? What about the people that actually paid it back? How is that fair to them? And the cat, like you said, the cab driver who didn't go to school, how should his taxes be raised for people that did go to school and make more because they have a better paying job? That's not fair. <laughs> it's it is nuts. completely regressive policy, yeah. unfair, and let's attack the real problem, which is the value of the education and not getting jobs. Yeah. Rebecca, thank you very much. I enjoyed the conversation and uh, something I think, unfortunately, we'll probably have to revisit more than once.